We are ready to get started here with our newest of ASMFC management boards. This is the first meeting of the Coastal Pelagics Management Board. I'm the new chair. My name is Joe Semino. I'm the Administrative Commissioner for New Jersey. I have with me from staff Emily Frank and, and uh, Angela Giuliano, who's the chair of the TC from, from Maryland. <clears throat> we have a couple items to go through. Uh, I think we should be able to get through our agenda quite easily. Um, we'll have a presentation from Angela on the TC recommendations. Uh, to, to get started, um, we'll go through the approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or issues with the agenda as, as is? Not seeing any hands, we'll approve the agenda by consent and approval of the proceedings from the October 2020 meeting. Again, this is when it was a, a joint meeting of the South Atlantic. Any issues <clears throat> with the proceedings from the October 2020 meeting? Okay, if not, again, uh, we'll consider that approved by consent. We'll take public comment on any items not on the agenda. We have a, a possible action item following this. Once we get a motion for that action item, I'll, I'll allow public comment on that motion. So this public comment period would just be on anything not on the agenda. Great. No hands. So we'll move on. <clears throat> Again, we'll, we'll be listening to the technical committee report for the consideration for uh, a new quota block or possibly new quota block time frame for COBIA. So, um, and we'll go right to Angela. We're going to turn it right over to Angela. Hi, as Joe said, my name is Angela Giuliano and I work for the Maryland Department of Natural Resources and I'll be reviewing the technical committee report on the quota block recommendation. Uh, just as an overview, um, because it's been a while since we've all met, um, I'll first go through a history of the current harvest specifications. Um, including Amendment 1 and then followed by Addendum 1. Um, I'll review the two options that the Technical Committee um, discussed, as well as the data we considered when making our recommendation and then go into the recommendation itself. As some background information on Amendment 1, this is Section 4.1 is where it describes the harvest uh, specification process. Um, so the board can set um, the total harvest quota, vessel limits, possession or bag limits, um, minimum size limits, and the commercial closure trigger through the harvest specification process. And the board's able to set these for up to three years. A new specification should be implemented either after previous specifications have expired or a new stock assessment is available. Um, and then Amendment 1 also specifies that the harvest specification should occur no later than the fall meeting to be implemented the following year. So after the last stock assessment uh, is when we set the current quota block for 2020 through 2022. And the board at that time set the quota at 80,112 fish, which corresponded to about 2.4 million pounds per year. Following Amendment 1, this was allocated 92% to the recreational sector and 8% to the commercial sector. Um, and based on, you'll see this table here that um, shows the various quota options that at that time were considered by the board based off of projections provided by the Southeast Fisheries Science Center following the last um, assessment. And when the TC was doing these recommendations at that time, the focus was really on the probability of being overfished. So the projections went out through 2024. Um, and as you can see that, uh, row highlighted in yellow is what was ultimately chosen by the board as the quota. That was the max rec maximum recommended by the technical committee and had a probability of being overfished of 0.25 by 2024, assuming 2.4 million pounds uh, constantly caught each year. Following setting of the quota, um, addendum one was initiated basically to reevaluate the um, allocation between the recreational and commercial sectors following um, the change in the MRIP estimates that incorporated the fishing effort survey. 
Um, so in 2021, the allocation changed to 96% recreational and 4% commercial. Um, however, the previously agreed upon quota of 80,112 fish remain the same. And these changes in the quota became effective January 1st of 2021. So following these changes, um, a few of the states submitted, evaluated their landings relative to the new quota levels and submitted new regulations to conform to their new soft recreational targets. Um, specifically in Virginia, they reduced their harvest 42% and North Carolina liberalized their regulations for private recreational anglers. Um, in addition, some of the de minimis states changed their regulations as well in 2021, either moving to match Virginia's rec regulations or implementing the new de minimis option that was provided in addendum one. So there were two options considered by the technical committee um, for the board meeting today. Uh, the first would be to maintain the 2020 through 2022 quota block. Um, so basically, the T if this option were chosen, the technical committee would de uh, develop specification options for a new quota for the 2023 through 2025 fishing seasons during the summer of 2022. And these would be presented to the board uh, for their consideration at their fall 2022 meeting. Uh, given all the management changes, however, that occurred in 2021, the other option would be to change the quota block to 2021 through 2023. Um, so if this option were chosen by the board, the current total quota of 80,112 fish would remain the same for the 2023 fishing season. And this would align with the new sector allocations and regulations implemented by some states in 2021. Um, if this option were chosen, the technical committee would meet um, in the summer of 2023 to develop specification options for the 2024 through 2026 seasons. So as the TC uh, considered these two options, we first reviewed the previous projections that had been done following the last stock assessment, as well as discussed the timing of the next stock assessment. So CDAR 58 had a terminal year of 2017 and was accepted for management use in 2020. Uh, the next CDAR assessment, which would be an update assessment, is tentatively scheduled for 2025, which means the terminal year would likely be either 2023 or 2024, and it would likely be available to inform management in 2026. Uh, we did reach out to the Southeast Fisheries Science Center about extending any projections past 2024 being we would be setting quotas for a couple years without a projection available um, and they recommended against it however um, just because of the increasing uncertainty past the terminal year um, however the technical committee could request updated projections if there are particular concerns with the stock either perceived changes in abundance or if we want to incorporate more recent um, landings and discard information So the second piece of information that the technical committee considered is where harvest has actually been relative to the 2.4 million pounds used in the projections previously. Um, so as you can see from this table here, uh, in 2019 and 2020, between the commercial and recreational sectors, uh, we are probably a little bit under 2.4 million pounds. 2021's landings are not complete at this point. Um, final. Uh, commercial landings won't be available until compliance reports are submitted in July. However, as you can see, even just looking at the MRIP estimate of pounds at this point, we are going to be over 2.4 million pounds. However, despite this variability, uh, the average over those three years is just under 2.4 million pounds, which is what those projections were assuming. Um, so at this point, the technical committee did not find it, did not think it would be useful to update the projections at this point. So with these considerations, uh, the technical committee is recommending to change the quota block to 2021 to 2023. Um, this aligns with the new sector allocation and the new regulations implemented by states in 2021. And when we go to evaluate states landings against uh, their projected soft targets, this would allow us to incorporate two years of consistent regulatory um, periods. Um, 
moving the quota block would also um, is not expected to uh, be a risk to the stock given it was set fairly conservatively to begin with. Um, as I mentioned before, the projected maximum probability of being overfished or medium probability of being overfished was 0.25 in the terminal year of the projection, which was 2024. Um, and as I just mentioned, while the individual year landings have been variable, the average harvest is about where we were in those projections conducted previously. And so as I mentioned previously, if the board chooses to adopt this quota block, the technical committee plans to meet in 2023 to develop options for your consideration for uh, the next quota block quota. Um, and we would continue to monitor 2022 landings to determine if there's a need to update the projections through 2024. So if 2022's landings look similar to 2021 where they're much higher than 2.4 million pounds, we would probably go back to the Southeast Fishery Science Center and request some updated projections. Um, and as mentioned previously, um, these would be brought no later than the fall board meeting in 2023 for the board's consideration to set for the 2024 fishing year. Uh, while we were having these discussions, there were some general recommendations from the technical committee just regarding future specification and assessments. The first just being sure to monitor year to year changes and variability in state landings, um, as well as to continue to evaluate new data on overlap of the Atlantic and Gulf Coast stocks off of the Atlantic coast of Florida as new data becomes available. And with that, I will take any questions. <clears throat> Great, thank you, Angela. Any questions for Angela on the TC's recommendation? Yep, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, so um, just to clarify your update, if they had to update the projections, you're really only talking about updating one or two years beyond on the projections? Yeah, One so year. at the end of um, that last assessment, we had the Southeast Fishery Science Center use, I think at that time, 2018 landings had been finalized and they used it, I think a three year average for 2019 estimate of landings. Um, and then it was set at 2.4 million pounds for 2020 through 2024. So we'd be able to update what, 19, 20, 21, 22, so yeah be a few years updated. Okay, any other questions? Okay, fairly straightforward. We have a recommendation from the TC. Um, I would I would hope we could see a motion on this to move this forward. Do we, ha does anyone have a motion on this? Shanna, go ahead. Um, I'd like to move that we uh, take the TC recommendation of changing the COBIA quota block to a time frame of 2021 through 2023. Thanks, Shanna. Let's get that up and then I'll ask for a second. Okay, there we are. Lynn, is that a second? Okay, thank you. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Okay, Roy, we see you online. Was your hand a second this? It was, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, to the, the maker of the motion, just as a friendly uh, request from staff, if um, we could specify in the motion that accepting that quota block would set the quota for 2023 at the current quota level um, with that suggested language on the screen, if that would be okay with the, the maker and the seconder. That's fine with me. I can read this into the record too as well. I didn't realize you guys had one crafted already. Thanks. Okay, so I'd like to move to change the COBIA quota block timeframe from 2020 to 2022 
2021 to 2023 for the current annual total harvest quota of 80,112 fish, thereby setting the 2023 cobia harvest quota at 80,112 fish, resulting in a coastwide recreational quota of 76,908 fish and a commercial quota of 73,116 pounds. Thank you, Shannon. That's a motion by uh, Shannon Madsen, second by Len Fagley. Um, any discussion on the motion? Okay. No hands. Um, I, again, this is pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to ask, is there any objection to the motion? Okay. Not seeing any hands. That's great. We'll consider that motion uh, passed by consent. And we will move on to the other species for this new board. And I'll turn it over to Emily to talk uh, Spanish mackerel for both the, uh, the assessment and uh, to give us some information on what's happening with management south of us. Thanks, Mr. Chair. So I just have two very brief updates on Spanish mackerel that were provided to us by uh, South Atlantic Council staff and CDAR staff. Uh, so next slide, please. So again, the first is just on the stock assessment timeline for the next Spanish mackerel assessment. And the second is just an update on management in federal waters and a recent uh, amendment uh, from the South Atlantic Council. Next slide. So as far as the stock assessment, the CDAR 78 report for the Atlantic Spanish mackerel stock is actually now available online as of today. So that report was just released. And the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council Scientific and Statistical Committee will review those CDAR 78 results at their summer meeting and discuss recommendations. And the South Atlantic Council will then review the assessment and the SSC recommendations at their September council meeting. So just a brief update on that upcoming uh, information on the Spanish mackerel stock. Next slide. And then as far as federal waters management, um, Amendment 34 to the Federal Coastal Migratory Pelagic FMP was just approved by the South Atlantic Council and the Gulf of Mexico Council in March and April of this year. And council staff are currently working to finalize that amendment to be transmitted to NOAA. And that amendment would allow cut off or damaged Spanish mackerel that are caught under the rec bag limit and that complies with the minimum size limit to be possessed and offloaded ashore. And for this amendment, damage refers to Spanish mackerel that um, have been damaged due to predation. Next slide. So that's all, just the quick updates. Um, I might be able to answer a few questions. We also have CDAR staff on the line and if anyone else from the council would like to, to add anything, go ahead. Yeah, we have the executive director. So, uh, Mr. Carmichael, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving us a little more info on the report. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's great that the assessment came out today. So, just in time for the board and, you know, what you guys summarized is, is absolutely correct. We're looking at probably mid to late July right now for the SSC meeting. It'll be a webinar meeting. We can certainly let ASMFC know that that's going on because I imagine some folks from the technical committee and others might want to listen in to those discussions. The intent is that they will provide the ABC. That'll go to the council in September. Uh, it'll go to the advisory panel in the fall, probably October, and then back to the council in December, and they'll start talking about the response. It'll be a big topic of discussion during 2023, and hopefully a year, year and a half to get it in and get it approved. We're not anticipating um, uh, statutory deadlines related to overfished or overfishing, at least based on the preliminary look at the assessment. So that will certainly help us up out with getting it done. Great, thanks, John. Uh, question from Chris Batsavage. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, th thank you, Emily, for the uh, the update, and uh, and John for the the detailed kind of timeline as far as uh, the where this is going through the South Atlantic Council. Will uh, this board also receive uh, a presentation on the on the stock assessment either later this fall or early next year? 
we can work with uh, council staff and CDAR staff to, to try to get something lined up for a future board meeting. All right, I don't, I don't see any other questions. And that did that wrap us up for Spanish? Okay, so we have uh, one other item on the agenda that uh, is, we'll need to action on, and that's electing a, a vice chair. Mr. Chair, ahead, I'd like to, to nominate Erica Burgess from the great state of Florida, chair. As the vice chair, excuse me. Thanks, Nick. Um, we, ha we have a nomination for Erica Burgess of Florida. And I see some hands. I'm assuming those are hands in support. Very good. Thank you. So uh, this is how we do things. Erica's not able to be here, so <laughs> she is fairly in. <laughs> yep, sorry. She, she knew ahead of time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Any other business to come before the board today? Okay, no hands. Very good. I, I appreciate everyone's time today. Uh, thank you to staff and Angela for all the help in getting us through this.